Welcome to True Health Kids. You already know what time it is, man. The young goat in the building. Make sure you tune in to True Hill Heat Podcast. This is the knockout artist, Chris Hero. And if you're looking for some true heel heat, you better listen to the boys. serious i'm not gonna sit back and take this fucking shit hello 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 it is me it is me your true hill phenom sp3 we are live on the true hill heat youtube facebook and twitter for collision discourse number 28 edgehead open a review of the March 30th, 2024 edition of AEW Collision as only we can. And of course, to do that, I am joined by my co-host this week. This time, folks, he is the man you know as sober guy, drunk guy. Now he is fried guy, oh, I gotta JJ. Change that. <laughs> I got to change that. I was uh, for Romeo's watching long. I was tore up on my mind. From the floor up. Yeah, my phone died. My phone died. I'm gonna try to get back on. Next thing I know, it's seven o'clock in the morning the next day. So yeah, I was gone. I was, I was gone. Don't drink four local kids. Four local is a no. Oh market. no, no! Why would you do uh, that? Yeah, you should yeah. know this already. When I don't want to spend money, I want to get fucked up. <laughs> that's my go. That's my go to. It's not a good go to. I, I got it. That's I, I, that. That is not the the go to, folks. At all. Just when them. Let everybody know you should Don't not go to <laughs> and do not follow in drunk guy. Yes, we're gonna call him drunk guy for doing that dumb and stuff. Drunk guy was very <laughs> drunk. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, welcome everyone. Collision discourse. We're back. We took a week off, just like AEW Collision. Mm-hmm. There was no collision episode for us to review yes uh last week. So we're back this week, and it is mm-hmm. WrestleMania week. So this is the real start. Of our WrestleMania week coverage because we got oh, 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 rated yeah. Raw superstars tonight with Raw in Brooklyn for the go home show before WrestleMania. We also got our WrestleMania preview tomorrow with myself, Romeo, and Zach Haydorn coming up at 105 p.m. Eastern time. So be on the lookout for all the great content we got for WrestleMania week. So tomorrow and they- at one. Let me cut you yeah. off. Tomorrow one. Oh, you mean, guys, need any, guys need any? Uh... Somebody to join? You can. You we we can. We need a fourth guy. Can you fill the spot? I am stepping in. I am the surprise entrant of the Andre the Memorial Battle Royal. I will be joining you guys tomorrow for the preview. One hundred percent. There we go. There we go. We got a four pack, a four fatal four way for tomorrow for our WrestleMania 40 preview and predictions. So join us for that. One o five p.m. Eastern time. But 
We're going to talk about AEW Collision from this past Saturday in London, Ontario. So we appreciate y'all if you're watching us live. We appreciate y'all if you're watching us on demand. Remember to show that appreciation back the simplest way possible. Drop the thumbs up on this video. Share this video with all your wrestling fans, friends, and family on all your favorite social media platforms. If you are new to the True Hill Heat YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell to stay notified for all the great content here. And of course, sound off in the live chat we love to interact with all of you love to highlight your comments on screen so we'll try to highlight as many as we can but of course if you're feeling generous and you want to make sure your comment is highlighted on screen you could send a super chat donation those are so important to what we do here it goes back to all the contributors that you see on screen so you know show your support to what we do here with a super chat donation always we got trey jones in the chat who says geez talking about you with the uh for loco i'm sure Man, need to sponsor me at this point. He says, uh, just drink a MD 2020. Yes, uh, if you want to get fucked. Absolutely. That is a that's another. You know what's funny? The, funny you bring it up, Trey, because I was looking for a mad dog before I went down the deeper rabbit hole of getting a four loco. Because uh Mad Dog has a sour apple I like, and but they didn't have any, they were all gone, so I just came to four loco. Yeah, it was a lesser two number. evils, I guess. Was it the lesser of two evils? Well, no, the Mad Dog is the lesser of two evils. Yeah, okay, okay, that's, okay. That's that's, that's, a, uh, that's definitely not. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I was like, I was like, yeah, Four Loco seems like that would be the one that would be the worst of the two. Yeah, that's awful. Uh, but but yes, uh, any other comments about uh drinking choices with uh Silver Guy JJ? Sound off in the live chat with those. <laughs> uh, but. AEW collision from March 30th, 2024. The was from... is blank, good brother. I I I know. Oh, okay. I I <laughs> I I, I, re I realized that I was frozen for like a, a minute now. I was just gonna ask you, how'd you thought think of there we go? How'd you think <laughs> about in, in London, Ontario, Canada on Saturday? Uh I feel like uh collision needs to have a week off regularly to come back with some good wrestling. So um uh, a cool show, very good show. Um, I almost out. Well, the the best thing of the show started the show off, in my opinion. So uh, I can see that. So um, but it was good. It was a cool show throughout. Um, some nice wrestling. You know, one thing about Collision that gives us good wrestling. Um, nice tag team match. Ricky Stark scared the shit out of us, I'm sure. Uh, and the main event, which was of course got freaking Brent Danielson and Shibata teaming up. What are you like crazy? It was fun. Uh, we got Eric Isaacs in the chat who says, Hey, THH fam, it's Mania Week, and the wrestling world will be in Philly, not just WWE, but AEW slash ROH, TNA, GCW, and WR will be represented as well. So, yes, uh, everyone around the wrestling world will be centered in Philadelphia. We'll be having coverage of a lot of the shows going on through during the week. We're going to have uh, watch longs for i think I, be, I believe thursday and friday i know for sure friday i, I gotta check double check with thursdays you know i don't i don't do the watch alongs i just <laughs> i just try to promote them as best as i can uh i asked jeremy on in the weeds this question i will ask you this as well what show are you looking forward to the most outside of wrestlemania oh i'm gonna say because come on out <laughs> night one are you kidding me uh, anyway, uh, that's my uh, answer as well. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to. I'm looking. For, I really want to see Bloodsport. Um, I'm looking forward to Bloodsport. Uh, Super Cut of Honor. I'm kind of like, like a little excited by Bob Mistake. Well, I don't want to say kind of like by choice because I I thought this year would be great in Philly. Uh, the card is not, not. They have three ma two matches I want to really see the main event and of course that uh the six woman tag. Um, but not a theme. Hikaru Shida? Nah, nah I want to see I'm that. I'm sure. One. I'm, I'm sure I could deliver, but I'm not. I'm not. And I and I want to see Queen Queen Amanada win the ROH Women's Team uh, Women's title. Team title. And uh, that's all they announced so far. Oh yeah, and I just saw uh, Dawn Castle and uh, yeah, and Johnny, Johnny TV, TV and, and fight with without honor. honor. Um, but hopefully it's good. I mean, I already wasted my money. I can't really. <laughs> I can't really <laughs> go go any go go and get any worse than that. So, and I think uh, Kyle Fletcher versus yes, Lee Johnson. Lee Johnson. 
for the title. Yes, absolutely. And that should be a good one. Uh, the, the irony. Um, to uh, I know who and the two women who will be paying very close attention to that match. Um, oh wow! Uh, yes, uh, yes. That's uh, that. I, oh, I didn't even think about that. That is funny. <laughs> It's like, yeah, our, 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 our girls, our girls are always hanging out, so we got to yeah. fight. <laughs> Might as well just fuck, fuck it. I just have a match for the weekend. Turn up, probably have some orgies after, you know, you know, let's have some fun times. With Jesus all, with Christ. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, it should be a good match. I didn't, oh, I didn't think we would need this. Words and opinions <laughs> of Sober Guy JJ do not necessarily reflect those of True Hill Heat, its viewers, or affiliates. Oh come on! No, I'm just saying, you know, they, they they it's a WrestleMania week is a a week full of fun, and it looks and they might like to have fun with each other. A, re- a WrestleMania you know? orgy, a super card orgy. Yeah, super card of orgies. There you go. Super card of orgies. There you go. Or orgy of honor. Orgy um. Of honor. <laughs> <laughs> So let's talk about AEW Collision from March 30th, 2024 from London, Ontario, Canada. The show kicked off with Adam Copeland with the Cope Open. And the first time he is defending the TNT Championship since winning the title in Toronto, Ontario, Canada against Christian Cage. He makes his way to the ring. Copeland reiterates he's restarting the Cope Open. And this time the TNT title will be on the line. And he asks, who's going to answer the challenge? And we hear, I hear the the familiar riff, but I'm like, really here? It is Matt Cardona, the <laughs> former Zack Ryder, the former Edge Head. I pulled up this little pretty picture here oh, man, of, of Cardona, Brian Myers, and Adam Copeland back in, what was this, 2007? Oh, yeah, yeah, 2007. 2007, 2008 was the era of La Familia and uh, the Edgeheads, uh, Myers and Cardona, then known as Hawkins and Riders, winning the uh, tag team championships at that time. Mm-hmm. But this opened up the show, the Cope Open with uh, Cardona and uh, Copeland here. And they and this crowd was going crazy yeah. for this. They were very yeah. excited for this matchup. Everyone knew this was uh, Cardona's dream match. And I thought the commentary team did a great job of kind of reiterating that throughout the matchup. And there was like so much good heat in this matchup, especially for Cardona. Early on, he pokes uh, Copeland in the eye before the first commercial break and really starts isolating him. Uh, then Copeland is able to kind of make his own comeback, but Cardona keeps using different moves that Copeland knows, like the Impaler at one point. He looks for a spear at another point. Copeland, instead, he gears up. He gets in the corner, looks like he's going for a spear, but uh, Cardona meets him in the middle of the ring with the radio silent for a great near fall in this one. The crowd was really on the edge of their seat for that one. This crowd was just very much invested engaged throughout but in the end it was uh cardona looking for another one of uh copeland's signature moves as he went for the spear but copeland hits the spear of his own one two three to pick up the victory in this one this one going just short of 14 minutes i thought it was a great opener to the show post-match you get uh the lights going out and malachi black pops up and he goes face to face with Adam Copeland. It looks like we're teasing a TNT championship matchup when Buddy Matthews comes from behind and attacks Copeland. So it's two on one with the House of Black on Adam Copeland when Mark Briscoe comes out and tries to make the save, but the numbers get the better of him. But it's Eddie Kingston who comes out for the big save. We get a stare down with the House of Black and the baby faces with the lights go out again and the House of Black disappears as the baby faces are in the ring kind of celebrating on their own but then later on in the night we get kind of answers to the question of what this is leading to as we hear from copeland uh mark briscoe and eddie kingston and they talk about how the house of black they always do the number game the numbers game but uh copeland says that he is challenging the house of black to a trios matchup at dynasty Briscoe says that him and Eddie Kingston have to focus on their ROH world title match coming up at Supercard of Honor. But he says after that, he says that he wants revenge on the House of Black and they mess with the wrong people. Eddie Kingston says you guys do all that spooky stuff, all that kabuki stuff. 
all that Muda stuff, but he says that they won't be spitting uh, any miss. It will be blood and teeth at Dynasty. So it is official. House of Black versus Eddie Kingston, Adam Copeland, and Mark Briscoe in a trios match at AEW Dynasty in St. Louis, Missouri, Sunday, all, April 21st. What did you think about the opener to the show first with Copeland and Cardona tearing it up in a fun little opener to the show in London, Ontario, and then the post-match with House of Black and then the promo to set up the matchup at Dynasty? I love the opener. I love uh, Cardona getting his moment against Adam. I mean, I, obviously, he's not signed with AEW guys, so the, talking about building towards this and all this other dumb shit, it's not, I wasn't, that was not going to happen. He's not with AEW. And it's an open challenge. I don't like it's not, it doesn't take much to put together. Obviously, they can build off of that, but Cardona is not with AEW. So, yeah. Great match, great opener. Um, I, I don't pay much attention to Cardona out since he's been gone. Out in the, I got GCW, I watch here and there. I'm not the biggest GCW mark. Sorry, not sorry. Uh, so, I don't really pay attention to his shit. He looks good. He looked great out there. Him and, him and Adam tore that shit up. I'm um, happy that he got his moment. As for the and, and it was and me personally, my favorite match of the night. Uh, as for the what happened after, I'm, I don't like it at all. Not one bit. That match is not a dynasty match. I'm sorry. That is not a fucking dynasty match. That's a match I could have gave us the week of dynasty leading to Adam and Malachi. And and and, and I feel bad because in my mind, I would I would love to think. That damn okay, maybe this is leading to him and Copeland at the next pay per view, which would be double or nothing. One of yeah. the big shows. We've dealt with this with three different feuds already with Malachi Black, thinking he's going to have a one on one opportunity. And it, and it never happens. And it, it never, never happens. happens. So it's like I'm good until I see. Until I'm like, oh shit! Until it's announced, I don't care this match. And then you got Briscoe and freaking Kingston about to have a basically be the shadow of the Philly the next week. So why would you interject the, those two of all people into that? Well, Briscoe, Briscoe it makes yeah, sense. Yeah, Briscoe, yeah, Briscoe makes and, sense. And and it does and it does make sense with with Eddie because he's yeah. facing Mark and because the matchup is built on respect that he would have yeah. Mark's bracket. I guess, but that's not a dynasty match to me. That is what that, we could have got that match really the week before Dynasty. I don't. I do, yeah. I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling. It. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I, I, I'm a little bit more forgiving of it because it's one of these uh, new pay-per-views for AEW. And with the new pay-per-views for AEW, I'm a little bit more forgiving. That's why I was okay with them doing... Yeah. What did they do at um, Wrestle Dream? They did, I think they did Don Callis Family versus Abushi, Jericho, and Omega. Omega. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was fine with that because it's an extra pay-per-view. This is not what they had planned. I think that the plan is Malachi and Copeland. I'm going to have faith I that it's that. But I would say by far, hey, I would say by far, though, uh, as far as the, the matchup that kicked off the show with Cardona and Copeland, this was by far the best Cope Open. We need more of we need more of this Cope Open and less of Copeland facing people like Griff Garrison. People and having having good but forgettable matches with the likes of like Lee Moriarty and and Dante Martin. Those were good matches, but they weren't the most memorable. You kind of forgot them the next day. This one is a, is a matchup that a lot of us are gonna remember because it was it was Cardona coming in a rare appearance, making a surprise return to AEW after a brisk stint all the way back in 2020 and he's changed himself so much since then with his whole in uh you know indie indie god and deathmatch yeah, king death run king. <laughs> on the on in the GCW and now he's back in TNA what a week for him he he returns to TNA on Thursday and then has his dream match on Saturday with Adam Copeland hard worker man got to got to got to respect it uh he's uh, he's he's planting his flag everywhere he goes right now so uh... Good for him. Hopefully something big pays off. I know, obviously, he's he definitely – this is a guy he is. He definitely wants to be in that big spotlight again, I'm sure. Yeah. So, uh, uh, hopefully things work out for him. Hopefully that was a, a eye-opener for people on Saturday against Adam. So, we'll see. 
Absolutely. Uh, we got Sergio in the chat who says Cardona versus Copeland two in Long Island. Jeremy says this match absolutely cooked. We got Eric Isaac who says Cardona is everywhere lately. Won't be surprised if he shows up at WWE this week for his real life wife, uh, Chelsea Green. I would not be surprised if a WWE return could be in the cards sooner rather than later. If they, especially if they see this, if they see this performance, this felt like cardona could be like a upper mid card mid-card, to yeah. main event heel like potential knocking on the glass ceiling type heel and he's still in his prime years man he's still, yeah he's still in his 30s he's almost the same age as cody Rhodes. who's obviously you see what he's doing i'm not saying he's going to be a cody Rhodes. i'm just saying that you know they're around the same age and they're in their prime years and this is like this is that time and you, you could tell just by look even by having that match like i said i haven't watched them in years and I, from what i've seen it looks like he's grown so much yeah. Into being a better performer than when he left, when he left uh, WWE in 2018, 19? No, no, twenty twenty. Yeah, right, yeah. Right, right, I got fired. Like it's it's because of like his work in GCW, GCW. Him going to GCW was a real turning point for yeah. him. Like for for Cody, it was going to Ring of Honor and meeting up with the Young Bucks. For Cardona, it was going to GCW and becoming the the basically this generation's Jerry the King Lawler. In ECW, hey, busy, yeah. like that's what he was. <laughs> that's what he was in GCW, and it really kind of completed everything for him because he's always been kind of decent to good in the ring. He's always had a kind of good, quirky, kind of fun character that can connect with fans and get over and be popular. But we never knew if he could really do it as a heel, yeah. and this really proved that the GCW run proved that, and then. You saw here, he felt like a main event heel in this matchup against Copeland. Yeah, what? As soon as they, as soon as he can, as soon as they heard the always ready came out, that crowd was on fire for that match. Yeah, absolutely. We got Jeremy who says Malachi Black uh, got his eyes on TNT Championship. It's <coughs> interesting. Um, I don't know. I don't know if this will lead to Malachi winning the TNT Championship. Though. No, I don't think so either. Malachi seems destined that. to do stuff in AEW until his contract expires and he goes back <laughs> to WWE. Listen, uh, I, listen, don't, I don't know listen, if you should beat listen, titles listen. on a guy that seems like he has already got his eyes on WWE. Ah, man, poor Malachi. Yo. And, and, and I don't know why you got your eyes on WWE when you just saw what happened with Andrade, who thought, oh, I'm going to go back to WWE. <laughs> oh, man, I'm going back to WWE. I'm going to have the either the same spot that I had before or a higher spot. I'll be used better. Triple H is in charge. You're on the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal for your first WrestleMania <laughs> match. Congrats. Didn't, didn't, didn't even get the tag. Didn't even get the tag match, man. It's tragic. Dragon Lee. <laughs> yo, for real, yo. Dragon Lee, that that's went over lie, like a wet yo. fart. That was, because, that was bad. Because they gave Dragon Lee a three week push last year and then expected the fans to be like, oh, yeah, Dragon Lee's back. Yeah. Then when Santos became here, all he do, all he did was, was lose to him. He just kept yeah. losing him. So yeah. how do you randomly pop him up after being a loser and then get him a mania? Like, like it, it doesn't make sense. Like, it doesn't. And, and even that, even announcing him the newest member, only thing I would love to see out of this, because I don't care about that match either. Uh, it's Carlito turning heel because I love the emphasis they kept putting on Carlito's face every time they kept having the whole thing. But it just it just it just sounds very convoluted when I say out loud that they did that whole segment with Rey Mysterio going against two people that turned against him, and all the segment really accomplished was set up someone else turning against him. Against him. Ray, yo, reach a, that needs to be a uh, true heat list of everybody who's turned on Ray. That list is long. <laughs> it's really long if you go back to WCW. Yeah, WCW too. Exactly. It's a long uh, list. So, and, and Lucha Underground, too. Include Lucha Underground. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> uh, so you go, and next segment, uh, well, earlier in the day, we get FTR speaking with uh, Lexi Nair. Uh, Cash Wheeler appreciated being considered the favorites in the tournament, They were, but they were coming in cold, having lose to John Moxley and Claudio Castanoli their last time out. Hardwood said that while everyone loved a Cinderella story like the infantry, FTR had to beat them and had to become the first ever three-time AEW World Tag Team Champions. Any any thoughts? No. Whatever. 
<laughs> Next up, the oh, acclaimed and daddy has <laughs> come out for an interview with Tony Schiavone. No rap from Caster, thank God, as the acclaimed more serious of uh, after Buddy Club Gold invaded Billy Gunn's house on Rampage. Gunn was upset and he blamed Jay White for it. He says that Jay White always talks about how he's main event at Madison Square Garden uh, and how he sold out Madison Square Garden. Well, he's sold out Madison Square Garden many more times than Jay White has. And unlike Jay, he actually won. And uh, Gunn announced wow. that, and I was like, I was like, when did you sell out Madison? Yeah, Rock? yeah, that had me laughing. Yeah, because because you know, you know, the Rock and Stone Cold, and you know, yeah, I was I was gonna say I was gonna say unless it was Rock versus Billy Gunn or Stone Cold versus Billy Gunn, I don't see or or DX versus Stone Cold and Billy Gunn, I don't see how Billy Gunn sold out Madison Square Garden so many times. Just saying, sorry, Billy. Uh, Gunn announced that he will be facing Billy uh, Jay White one on one on Dynamite. Meanwhile, Max Caster he gets on the mic and he says that he challenges the Guns to stay in the back for the match if they have faith that Jay will be the better man. But they have all the faith that Daddy Ass will be beating Jay's ass on Wednesday. Bowen says that he was right about White all along because he's not here tonight, so they were all cowards. He says the demise of Bullet Club Gold begins on Wednesday because everyone loves the acclaimed. So, yes, it is official. Daddy ass Billy Gunn one-on-one -on -one with Switchblade Jay White this Wednesday, AEW Dynamite. What did you think about the promo? From the AEW trios world, Champion. oh man, you're seriously gonna ask me this? That's cool. Uh, fuck them. However, I something just sparked my interest. Um, not it didn't spark my interest, actually, just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, you guys had they have a feud, unfortunately, and the Bullet Club Gold are the RH six man tag champs. Yeah, why the fuck are they not fighting at Super Card of Honor? That's a good question. Good question. I don't have an answer. <laughs> it's just like, why is this? Why is this not going on? Uh, but whatever. Um, come on, Jay White against fucking Daddy Ass. Maybe maybe they announce it on Wednesday. Or, you know what? Or they showed that graphic. I thought about that, but like building a feud that they could have been announced this. And if you're trying to sell tickets, you know more people watch AEW than watch Ring of Honor, Tony. So you would think, you know, oh wow, Bullet Club Gold against the Claim Ring of Honor. All right, maybe come check it out. Whatever. I don't. I'm not a booker. I'm just a fan. Uh, however, uh, I don't care for Jay White and Daddy Ass. Jay White, get him the fuck out of there. Pack him up. A claim. Pack them up. Get him the fuck out of there. I'm just give to give Bullet Club Bang Bang Gang the belts. Like, hey, just... if this all ends with them consolidating these trios titles with the ROA Six Men, then at this point, the, that's what it should be. Not you the worst two, thing they've done. Right. They have those. those they have both of them feuding, unified belts. Clearly, I don't care enough about it. I don't even want to defend it on you on Ring of Honor's own show. Like you got so many other options, so many other options for the show right now. Like yep. uh, whatever, man. <laughs> it's like y'all are too much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we get next our first of two AEW World Tag Team Title Tournament quarterfinal matches you got the two-time aew world tag team champions ftr going up against the cinderella story of the infiltry and this was a much better matchup than the infiltry's first matchup because they actually got to wrestle and not just get beat up the whole matchup uh we get bravo and dean running wild with drop kicks to send ftr to the floor early on we get uh dean and wheeler uh going at it uh dean actually looked good here no botches like he did against house of black so i was i was thankful for that he even came in fired up with strikes in the corner hit a jumping uh elbow for a near fall bravo was the one that always looks very impressive for me he just has nice athleticism nice speed in the ring his footwork is very smooth uh wheeler caught him with a big power bomb at one point the near falls down the stretch were really kind of like the thing that really drove this to really be a really good matchup infantry got a close near fall with a cross body late the uh finishing sequence i thought was the best part of this match 
matchup as Infiltry tries to keep avoiding the Shatter Machine. Uh, we get Bravo fighting off both Wheeler and uh, Dax. They take out Dean on the outside, and we get uh, Wheeler getting flipped uh, upside down by Dax into yeah. position oh, for nice. the, the Shatter Machine. One, two, three. The infantry finally lose. The Cinderella story is over as FTR move on to the semifinals in the AEW World Tag Team Title Tournament. They did show their uh, a bit of respect to the infantry, putting them over in the post match. So I like that. What did you think about this matchup here? Oh, very, very, very good, uh, very fun match. Um, infantry, thank God they got a better outing, even though they lost. But uh, like you said, they actually. <laughs> Got some offense and actually looked much better than last week, which I hate it because them doing that made the made the finish much more. Well, not last week, the week before. Them doing that made that finish much more obvious, which I did not like. But uh, kudos to them. Almost had me. I, obviously, with, I, with FTR, I figured what they're going to do because you know how much FTR wrestling marks St. Louis being a big wrestling city. We know how that we know what's gonna happen. We know how that goes. Uh, but a uh, very good match, very good showing. Maybe they do something really with the infantry now uh, with with their fake dipset logo. Uh, I enjoyed the match, like you said. Carly Bravo definitely stood out. Uh, Sean Dean looks a little crushed and looks like almost out of place sometimes. But uh, nevertheless, uh, let's see. I don't. I mean, AEW has so many tag teams, and it looks like they're about to go back to the same well again, which I am totally okay with now because they are. Yes, focus on your tag yeah. teams. Yes. So we'll see. Well, I enjoyed the match. Very, very fun match. Very fun match for sure. I love that finish into the, him flipping over into the shatter machine. That was dope. Yeah. It feels like the AEW tag team division hasn't been whole for a while. So I hope that this tournament turns that around. And yeah. I like that they, they used it to kind of put the infantry over, kind of establish them as a tag team. We'll talk about the second matchup that they had on the night. I thought Private Party had a good matchup with uh, the Young Bucks on uh, on Wednesday. And I thought, you know, Orange Cassidy and Trent Beretta have looked good throughout being a tag team uh, since pairing up in the tournament as well. And that's the answer right there to Jeremy's question. He says, why isn't Matt Taven and Mike Bennett aren't on the Are ROH? They the yeah, they're the ROH a world tag team champions. The <laughs> obvious thing to do is to do them versus Orange and Trent because they just lost to them on Wednesday. And freaking they live in Philadelphia, so they don't even have to travel far. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't. Oh, my God. <laughs> hey. Hey, we just gave you the answer, Tony, if you're watching. Gave you we two know matches. And, and that was in, like, one sec, one minute. Well, we, we got to figure out who's going to face uh, Bullet Club Gold because it can't that be happened. the acclaim. Can't be the acclaim. They could have. They could have. They could have unified the belts right there. Nah, the acclaim. Nah, nah, nah. That's that's dynasty. You have to do that at dynasty. They're actually building that matchup for the AEW pay per view. What can you do with the ROH six man tag team titles at? Oh, they could find a team right, and whoever, and and then um, whoever, whoever faces Bullet Club Gold, because the Lord knows I don't know who the hell they would be facing. A claim could cost them the match. Could do that. Or you could just give them a, a, t- a trios team, and I got the perfect one. Pop Flight in Action Andretti. Oh, man. I, I must say he probably wants to stay away from Supercars since he broke his leg there last year. I'm just saying. Uh, he got to <laughs> redeem himself. He got to redeem himself, <laughs> man. Uh, Josh Matlock says, ROH belts on primarily AEW talent is a bad decision and doesn't do anything for the talent or the belts. And I hate to agree, but yeah, he's right. Sad. He's just sad but true. And you would think it would be a much better thing because guess what? The owner owns both damn companies. Oh my God. You thought there would be some type of synergy here. We went from too much ROH back in like 2022 uh, not a to not at all now, it seems. Yeah, it's, cr- and it's crazy. Like, yo, if you, if it, especially if you're still going to do super cards, that's supposed to feel like a big show. Yeah. Outside of Briscoe and Kingston, this does not feel like a big show. I think Athena and uh, well, yeah, Athena, they, yeah, they, yeah. they done they done a really I think they've done a really good job of building that. And I thought the match. the ROH <laughs> women's uh, TV title tournament has been yeah, the best the thing about the the builds to Supercard of Honor. And that's and I won't say it's sad because it's women, but 
It's it's kind of sad. It's oh come on, come on! No, I'm no, done. No, I'm no, done no. with you, sir. Words and opinions of Sober Guy JJ do not necessarily reflect those of True Hill Heat, its viewers, or affiliates. I wasn't going to say nothing crazy. What I was going to say is like the men's side does not feel important. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. I was going to be like it's bad. I, oh, I said I don't want to make it seem sad. Do I say it's sad? I don't. I don't know. Why have I said it? I didn't you mean did, it. You did. You just said, I don't want to say it's sad, but it's sad. Exactly. It's sad. Like, the, the, you know what? It's fine. It's, let me just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just dive off a cliff and just keep going on. <laughs> Why are you sad that the women are getting the spotlight? I'm not sad. Hey, didn't they main event last year, if I'm not mistaken? Or what What? what, what event? No, oh, final no, battle. They, uh, final battle and uh, Death Before Dishonor. Yeah. Okay. Akar, Jita, and uh, Athena, that's the greatest. They're calling, they're building it as the greatest Ring of Honor Women's World Champion versus the greatest AEW Women's World Champion. That could be a main event of the show. If Especially if Mark's not winning, then I think you should yeah, main yeah. event with that. Nah, Mark has to win, man. He has to win. He has to, <laughs> it has, he has has to win. win. He has, they, especially they, at the last year, win. he has to win. Yes, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, uh, oh, God. They, yeah, they can't, they can't fuck that up. And Philly Back- too, man. All right, we can go. Yeah, on. We can go. Got it. Backstage, uh, Ricky Starks and Big Bill were with uh, Lexi Nair, making their first appearance since losing the AEW World Tag Team titles in February. Big Bill said that while they weren't looking past top flight, he says they were a 16 seed, while he and Ricky were the number one. Indeed, Stark said that he and Bill were going to beat Top Flight here and then guaranteed another victory over FTR because they always beat FTR and they will move on to the finals. What did you think about Ricky and Big Bill, their first words since losing the AEW World Tag Team titles a month ago? Um, Actually, I'm going to piggyback off what you said earlier. You said the tag team titles haven't felt uh, the same after a while. And honestly... I don't think tag team titles have felt the same since those motherfuckers won about. Uh, I was just so random for them to even get the titles to begin with. Uh, and I feel like since then, it's just been like, mm, they haven't really had that much importance. I, I just felt like that title haven't felt that important since. Um, why are we keeping them a tag team? Let Ricky go back to do his thing. Like, I, don't I, I I want the turn to happen already. I want Ricky to yeah, be a baby like, face and Bill just turn on him. Bill, Bill, I think I think that they got what they got out of this. It got yeah. them a title run. They had a couple of months with the belts. It got Ricky his first official AEW title run, and it it really elevated Bill in the process. It did because uh, he was obviously floundering since he got to AEW. Um, he wasn't really floundering. He was just didn't oh, have a spot. Much. He didn't have a yeah, spot. He was. He was I thought, he, I thought he, he was good. Up. I thought he was good in everything he, he did, but he wasn't. I wouldn't say he was floundering. Every it I, seems like they put. I, it seems like it seems like the firm was a portal to people finding something else to do, something real to do. <laughs> the, the guns went through the portal and found themselves with Bullet Club Gold. Big Bill went through the portal and found Ricky Starks. Stokely went through the portal and found Willow and Chris Statlander. Ethan went through the portal and went to Ring of Honor. They're doing. They all doing so great. All of them. Wonderful. Wonderful going on for them indeed. So hey, the gun. The guns and Bullet Club Gold, man. That's yeah, great. Yeah. That's the thing, Jay White. Jay people, White people, people, people actually like them now. Uh, Un, unironically. Right. I wouldn't go that far for myself, but uh. Jay White saved their lives. Remember, everybody can find themselves a Jay White. I'm sorry, um, but yeah, I don't know why this tag team is still going on. Um, I mean, obviously, we will see what happens later, but I could care less for them. They were thrown together to begin with, so it's like we'll see. Uh, so next up, we get Kyle O'Reilly going one on one with JD Drake. Uh, Drake took O'Reilly down very early on with his Shining Wizard, but he missed a Vader bomb and a cannonball. O'Reilly peppered him with uh, leg kicks and chest kicks before taking him down with a leg sweep. Uh, he hit the axe and smash uh, kick combination and then hit a chest, a big chest kick for a near fall. He then uh, grabbed, caught uh, Drake's arm on, on the kick out and then locked in the Armageddon. 
for the tap out victory, a very quick win for Carl O'Reilly here. And this is what, what I much rather prefer. If you're going to build Carl O'Reilly up with these victories and he's versing people that is just a step down as far as star level to him, I feel like he has to win these in relative fit, qu quick fashion. Even though I like J.D. Drake, I prefer these type of singles matches than giving J.D. Drake 10, 12 minutes against Kyle O'Reilly. Right. That doesn't do anything for Kyle O'Reilly. And then we after know... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, after the match, uh, the Undisputed Kingdom came out and celebrated with O'Reilly, once again, putting them on their, on their shoulders. Like, we what know Kyle O'Reilly's a... Kyle O'Reilly's a badass. Like, I feel like this... Like, the, even his look now, he just seems like a... Like, I feel like once he came back, he should just come back, fuck everybody up. You yeah. know? And then make the Undisputed Kingdom obviously like, please come back. Like, we need somebody like you right now, part of the group. And he makes more advances. No, and then it leads to, I guess, him facing Roderick or whatever the case, it leads to down the line for him. But like you said, there's no reason that match should have went that long with JD Drake. I'm sorry. It just, it's just, I feel like his look right now and how he's carrying himself. We and he's and he's a legit like a legit fuck you up. It's not a. This isn't a, this isn't a gimmick. No, that, I, that's why I said I, I like I like that it was a quick win. I thought I thought that it was the perfect time that it needs. No, no, to... yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying I'm just saying like in general, like yeah. he should that that should not that should be his character. And so like they really like miss like oh is he gonna join on the Spirit of Kingdom or is he gonna turn like go against them? So yeah, I, I love Kyle O'Reilly. So hey, listen, let him get the belt off Roderick. Shit, take take the belt from him. I'm good. Yeah, just just completely bury Undisputed Kingdom. So you're, already, you're already in right. the process. I'm about to say you're already in the process. It's already too almost too late for them. <laughs> We got a great uh, video package at this point with about Will Ospreay going one-on-one -on -one with powerhouse Will Hobbs, a battle of wills between the members of the Don Callis family. And this completes Ospreay's, uh, basically his Don Callis family intro into AEW. He's faced Kanosuke Takeshita, he's faced Kyle Fletcher, and now he faces powerhouse Hobbs. Are you looking forward to this one? I think that this has the potential to be Hobbs' best match ever. I do must say this is probably going to be Hobbs' best match. Uh, I don't mean to be racist here when I say this, but uh, when I looked away from the screen and came back and saw this graphic, for a minute I thought Hobbs was swerving. I lost my mind. But uh, then I looked at it, oh, wait, no, what the hell? That's definitely not no, Hobbs' first Um But uh, however, this, like you said, uh, I, I would love, that's what I like to see more. Like in me, I'm like guys who are like athletic who do I won't say flippy shit, but like have a lot have a lot of aerial offense, such as the aerial assassin, Will Ospreay. I feel like that should play well into working with powerhouse hobs. So yeah. hopefully so that should be fun on Wednesday, a battle of wills. Yeah, the I would say in most recent time, I would say this year so far, Powerhouse Hobbs best match was against a flippy guy. Sammy Guevara, yeah. that match on yes, uh, that, match. That, yeah. that no DQ match on yeah. on Collision. So you 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 put in someone who's sorry, Sammy, but a lot better than say, Sammy. Don't be sorry, a blonde just, person can see that. Just, just being honest, uh, a lot better than Sammy Guevara, and can do a lot more than just the flippy stuff. But Hobbs can be a base for his speed and his offense and his athleticism. Going to be a great match. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, but next, we get our second of our two AEW World Tag Team Title Tournament quarterfinal matches. It's Ricky Starks and Big Bill, the former champions, going against Top Flight. And, and this one it was a nice little mix of styles as you have, uh, you know, Big Bill is a big man. You got Ricky, who does a lot of power moves. And you got uh, Top what? Flight. What? Sorry, sorry. sorry. Vontae Davis passed away. What the hell? Yeah, yeah, that that, that, that happened before we we went live. I didn't he, got the notification. He, Holy he, shit! He he audibly he audibly that was loud. Um, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. R.I.P. R.I.P. Vontae. Vontae Davis. Uh, but yes, uh, it was all about top flight, kind of keeping them on their back foot. But this match really changed for the uh, worst part as uh, Darius hit a walk, a wall walk, Pele kick on Starks, and this guy, and then Starks just fell to the to the mat. You could tell he was really favoring his neck after this. Uh, Darius tried a quick near fall with a Jack Knight cradle that Starks didn't get a kick out out of, but the referee uh, still counted, uh, still 
didn't count the one, two, three, because what we would find out later is that Ricky Starks and Big Bill were supposed to win this matchup. But after that Pele kick, uh, Ricky was a little bit shaken up, uh, a little bit dazed. So they went right to the finish and they changed the finish with Top Flight picking up the victory after a step up, a uh, step up off the show, off the chest of uh, Dante Tornado DDT on Ricky. Immediately after the matchup, the trainer, Doc Sampson, he got into the ring to check on Ricky. It was very precautionary. It was then announced on social media by Cam Hawkins and then later confirmed on social media by Ricky that he was fine and that it was a precautionary measure to end the match early. But it was precautionary to make the audible change of Top Flight getting the victory here. I, I expected Top Flight to get the win here because I thought that the tournament needed one more kind of like upset victory yeah. uh in it so i thought that the flight would get the win so i was surprised to hear in retrospect that ricky and bill was supposed to get the win here even though you can make sense of that of you want ftr to get their win back before they go for the titles yeah uh and then they kind of gave it away when the finish ended it played Ricky's music instead of the top flights. It's like, so, oh, wrong that one. Was, that was definitely not supposed to happen. Um, Like you said, uh, this is another surprise factor. And I kind of, yeah, this, I mean, like you said, after you have to get their win back against them, but like, I'm over this. Top flight, uh, go out there, deliver a good match for FTR. Um, you Don't make, I wish, I just wish some time, I mean, wrestling is wrestling, it's storytelling, but sometimes we don't need to make things so obvious. <laughs> So with Top Flight winning, that was a shock. Obviously, that wasn't supposed to happen. But everything happens for a reason. Shit. Maybe the universe didn't want them to have another RFTR match either. And then we get what we get. Uh, but glad Ricky is okay. Uh, that was scary because I'm like, oh, shit, he didn't even kick out. And then even the finish, it just looked, it looked off. So but glad Ricky is okay. And um, it was okay match. I, I didn't expect much from it, to be honest. No, I wasn't expecting it to be like this great matchup, but I thought it was it was going fine until that that spot. It was mm-hmm. just, damn, damn. I uh, and I'm glad that Ricky's okay, and hopefully, you know, it's no like other kind of. Uh, yeah, he's, he's had too many. Exactly, like, he's had way too many scares already in AEW, man. Yeah. Seriously. But I'm mean, good on good on uh, Darius. He went. He tried to go immediately to the finish. So yeah, yeah. it's good to see that you know guys are improving on finishing a match when someone's hurt after the whole. More sandwich. self-awareness, self-awareness. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. We do have a super chat donation, a super chism, if you will, from our boy Will Chism. Thank you so much, Will. We always appreciate Listen you. Listen up, you prick. We got Will who says, this is God telling Ricky it's over in AEW, my son. Do you think that uh, it's over for Ricky Starks in AEW? And do you think that he his career will be on the up if he makes the move to WWE? Uh, yes, only because his boy is the White Knight right now. <laughs> this is like the, the White Knight and Cody Luther King can't do no wrong. Um, and then he has so much charisma, so much, there's just so much going on with AEW with their talent that I feel like that's why he doesn't get, he's not where he needs to be. Cause he's could have been, he could have been a star a long time ago with that company. Um, put him in the right spot, right place. I won't, I won't say like an LA night cause I don't like LA night, but, uh, you got, he could have that kind of like, he could get over like that, have a prominent catch base and he can, he obviously he can cut promos like there's no tomorrow. So uh, he would definitely fit in a WWE uh, style environment. There's like just been moments where Ricky felt really hot and mm-hmm. they just never capitalized on never. it. Like he felt, he felt hot after, you know, after he lost the FTW championship and powerhouse Hobbs turned on him. He yeah. felt hot again after he I mean, won- they had him lose. He got his ass whooped. <laughs> he felt hot again after the eliminate when he won the eliminator tournament and he feuded with uh MJF and then they followed that with the Chris Jericho feud, which was like a bucket of cold water to any hotness that he had. And then he was hot again when he feuded with CM Punk on collision, but yeah. punk ruined that. So <laughs> Damn, dumb, punk killed killed two careers on the way out, Jack Perry and, <laughs> and Ricky Starks. 
<laughs> and then they he was hot again. I felt after the uh the the Brian Danielson match at All Out, but they didn't really capitalize on that either. So backstage, two great, two great matches, yeah, with the Texas Death Match. Uh, but backstage we hear from Christopher Daniels. He says that while he's been in AEW since day one, AEW wasn't about tenure. Tenure, it's about wins. So he challenged Malachi Black to a match on Rampage. He says that Malachi has been been running roughshod, so he wants to take him down next Friday. Bro, then this take motherfucker retire three years ago. Like, what, what? What are we doing right now? And trust me, no, I think I think, I think SCU broke up. Wasn't was it not I, that? No, he was done. Didn't he say he's retiring after that? And then no, like, what is he? Why is he still having random wrestling matches? I thought I thought that uh, it was just SCU wouldn't team again after that. No, then they have the whole thing and thank you, Daniels, and all that other shit in the ring for him when they had like SCU was officially done. Uh, I swear that's what they did. I would, but um, again, I... why would he exactly? Who nobody even cares? That, that's that's even so like why would they even? This is mad random. This is not the one on one match that I I want to see Malachi Black <laughs> having. After all this time, trust me. Hey, he got to get wins if he's going to go oh. for the TNT title. <laughs> We're going to beat up every old, every guy past 50 to, before he plays a 50 year old in edge. Like, that's what we want to do. Yep. Right. That's, what, that's what Dustin Dustin's getting TV time for because he's going to be the next one. <laughs> and Malachi one. Black. <laughs> Malachi Black beats on a uh, episode of Rampage Lord. or an episode of, coll- of a, a middle a middle match on, on uh, Collision. He should have um, the middle age open. Middle age open. I'm done. Uh, then next we get Thunder Rosa going one on one with Lady Frost. I love uh, Lady Frost. Always capitalizes on these opportunities and always finds a way to stand out. She's just so athletic with her cartwheels and the way she just gets out of like simple exchanges. Thunder Rosa turned up the physicality in this one. This was a, a lot more hard hitting than I expected it to be. Uh, in the end, it was Thunder Rosa with the big drop kick against the ropes. She went for the Tijuana bomb, but Frost was able to kick her way out of it and hit the killer chilla for a near fall. But Thunder Rosa ducked a hurricane kick And then finally she hit the Tijuana bomb To pick up the victory Thunder Rosa undefeated since her return to AEW Back in December and undefeated in 2024 Currently number one ranked in the AEW women's division More on that in a bit But what did you think about that matchup? Uh, Yeah, Thunder Rosa has been killing it since she's been back uh, Lady Frost, uh, they look went on a pretty had a had a good match. Uh, uh, one thing about one thing about women's wrestling, since I gotta redeem myself from earlier, it's very good on Collision. I enjoy women's wrestling on Collision. It's so fun. Oh joy. Uh, but hopefully, I mean, this leads you to not that more believable, sir. <laughs> it's the truth, though. It's the truth. It's from the heart. I promise. He's, like, the heart. he's like, he's like, so good. Uh, it's like I have it written down here. <laughs> I have it written on my wrist. Um. Man, I love AEW's women's roster. Man, so good. Thank you, Tony. All right. uh, but yes, uh, Thunder's been killing it since she's been back. Obviously, this is about to lead into her and Tony. I'm assuming Dynasty, maybe. Um, well, she she cut she cut a promo uh, on the on co- on the uh, on the social media where she said she was like, Tony, I'll see you at Dynasty. Oh, she did. Oh, well, there we go, St. Louis. Uh, we got, we got, yeah, Tr- Trey Jones. Good point. He says, Speaking of SCU, where the hell is Scorpio Sky? Is he hurt again? Is he, is he still have a job? Did you not miss this on What are we, we making him lose a job for? No, I, I don't want him to lose a job. So does he still have a job at AEW? I, have, I haven't seen him in forever. Either. I'm pretty sure he still has a job. Was, uh, I'm, I just think he was injured. Yeah, last time I saw him was. And then they show him on TV for a dynamite episode or something. He was sitting in the crowd. Uh no, no, no the, I'm not about Scorpio. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 maybe, maybe it was that. Uh Josh Matlock says all all about uh getting Malachi wins to move up the rankings. That's true. Uh yeah, we got yeah, Christmas Daniels coming out of retirement shit, I guess. It's okay. <laughs> uh we got Will Chisholm with a super Chisholm, a super chat donation. Thank you so much, Will, as always. 
Will says, uh, when Ricky cooked MJF in the promo, they should have done something bigger with him. Absolutely. That's what it, that's what I was saying. I was like, they they definitely should have capitalized with him. They they over they overvalued Chris Jericho at that point. That was the point where they were where they weren't really looking at the big picture. And then in the I think as he was beginning on the same show that Ricky had ended his program with MJF and was about to start his program with Chris Jericho, Jericho lost to action Andretti. So that was the focus, really, before he even got into his program. Wait, you really? want to talk about a wet fart? That did nothing. That did. That was the most useless win for somebody ever I've ever seen in my life. I did not. He literally went back to being a nobody the next week. They did not even build on that. No. What was the point of even giving him that win? Uh, we got Will Chisholm with another Super Chisholm. Thank you so much, Will. Why are you so crazy? Take it easy. Take it easy. Will says, it's funny. SP3 remembers everything in wrestling history, but he can't remember that, LOL. What What did I not remember? I'm about to say, if he, if he didn't remember, trust me, I'm sure it wasn't anything worth remembering. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I don't I don't even know what I didn't remember. Um, I didn't remember what I don't remember, but okay. <laughs> um, uh, we, uh, we got in the chat, uh, Jeremy, who says, uh, is Scorpio Sky still on ROH? No, he's not. I mean, he was there. He, he, he helped out Ethan Page at Final Battle. He was there for like a couple of weeks, but he hasn't been there since. And Ethan Page. He looked, he seemed like he was getting wins and kept talking about going for the Ring of Honor World Television Championship. And then Lee Johnson this week says he's going for the TV title at Supercard. So it's like, well, fuck Ethan Page then, I guess. Yo. <laughs> Man. Uh, the falling of gel supposed to stop wrestling? What the what? I don't know. I, I was like, I was like, uh, I think your finger slipped. in the blue hell is that. Well, I'm assuming he's trying to say the falling angel su supposed to stop wrestling, I guess. Maybe. Uh, Brooklyn Blake says, You haven't heard that Dustin has banger after banger matches? No, because only he said it. Only, only he says that. <laughs> Next, we have my favorite moment of the whole entire show, and probably uh, Silver Guy JJ's as well, because <laughs> he's a man. Thomas <laughs> Tony Storm and Mariah May and Luther were backstage with Renee Paquette, where she announces that the two top contenders in the rankings would have a match on Dynamite for a future shot. And those two top contenders are number one ranked Thunder Rosa and number two ranked Mariah May. Storm asks May if this is was her plan all along. She grabs her by the face and she kisses her right on the lips. This was a passionate kiss. This was full of emotion. And she declared that that's a brilliant plan. She says that she says that that's exactly what she would have done. She says that she sees a lot of herself in Mariah and she loves herself. <laughs> she says also <laughs> to lightly lightning dandelion, which was the greatest thing ever. Lightning Dandelion, you should have retired as a champion because you would never hold the title again. And yes, it is official. Thunder Rosa going one on one with Mariah May to determine the number one contender to face Timeless Tony Storm for the AEW Women's World Championship coming up at Dynasty. I'm gonna what come. did you What did you think about this? <laughs> what? Oh man, I'm gonna come. Anyway, uh, that was a great, a great segment. Um, it's so funny when she kissed. I really like she was kissing herself. So I yes. feel to them. <laughs> So that actually worked out perfectly. Um, and then the face yeah, afterwards. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Mariah's face afterwards has me dying. <laughs> they need to have an um, exclusive segment of them after the show. That would be great. Uh, however, uh, I'm loving this stuff with Tony. Um, Tony Storm and Adam and Mariah made it. It's just, you know, a match made in heaven, no pun intended. 
this should be a good match on uh, Wednesday here in uh, Thunder Rosa or Dandelion. Thunder, uh, Thunder Dandelion. Light, lightning, light, lightning Dandelion. <laughs> lightning Dandelion. Thunder Rosa, oh, Lightning Dandelion. That should be a good one. That should be a good one. That was a good, that was probably my segment of the night. Not my match of the night, but that definitely was my segment. I have my MVPs already ready. Can't, I just saw that. I was, pff, shit. MVP locked on locked here. <laughs> we got uh, Eric Isaacs who says, Battle of the Undefeated on Dynamite Wednesday, Rosa and Mariah, and won't, won't be surprised with Deanna Perrazzo gets involved to make it a three-way at Dynasty. Deanna Perrazzo has been very adamant about Storm tapping out at Revolution. So, yeah, that wouldn't be surprised if she inserted herself in there as well. Uh, we also got Trey Jones who says JJ gave this segment ten stars out of five. Was it was it a ten star ten star segment, JJ? I don't think he can hear me. I think his earbuds died. Can you hear uh, me no, now? You're, you're good now. Yeah. I said now I think I hear your earbuds in the died. background. What the hell? Uh, I was like ten star segment for you. Oh, 100 percent. Okay. Hundred uh, percent. Can you hear me? We get a. Yeah, we I hear you, even though you're dark. Uh, there you go. Uh, well, we That's get racist. <laughs> I mean it like that, sir. Uh, we get a video oh, wow. package, a great, great video package highlighting the career of Will Ospreay, talking about how he went from the UK independent, became a star in New Japan Pro Wrestling, winning pretty much every single championship available to him, coming into AEW, making the big announcement in November and his day is official debut matchup against Takeshita, all the great matches he's had since then with Fletcher and Shibata and all leading to the dream match with Brian Danielson at Dynasty. Any thoughts on this video package here? And AEW has been going in with the video package. You welcome yes. uh, Ice Cube, son. <laughs> They've been doing a uh, uh, showing and that's what they need. Like You gotta think, AEW, I won't say it's, a, it's not a casual standpoint yet for wrestling. So it'll give people insight, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of people who even know who Osprey is does not know what he did back in his his home country or New Japan or anywhere in the independence. So for them to show that video was dope. Uh, I love the one they did for Danielson. So and then for them to go back, go right after and do this one for Osprey, uh, they're making this match seem more and more important. Shit, it's already as important as it can get for me. But just giving that feel like this is these two guys who came from the bottom from nothing. Are to be where they're at now, at the top of their games, and then like they're about to face, they're about to have that match, that that dream match, at Dynasty. So uh, well done, and they and honestly, they've done a great job with Osprey since he's been there. I mean, I expect nothing less. I mean, he's one of the fucking greats right now in professional wrestling. Period. So for I, I don't see how you guys ruin that or fuck that up. So great presentation for him so far since he's been there. Dynasty man, that shit is gonna. Whew. That uh, the Swerve and Joe matchup. Uh, I'm looking forward, looking forward to the big moments too with Willow yes. winning. I think Willow's going to win the TBS title and Swerve wins the AEW World Champion. Yes, I see Willow winning only to see because I think her and uh, Mercedes get that match at double, uh, double or nothing. Yeah, because um, that's a year from their first match. Mm-hmm. Uh, the but finally we had the main event of this week's collision, the Blackpool Combat Club, Brian Danielson and Claudio Castanoli, who had the craziest travel going from Mexico to Canada in 24 hours after their fantastic eight-man tag team matchup, teaming up with John Moxley and Matt Seidel against CMLL's Volador Jr., Blue Panther. Ultimo Guerrero and Mystico. They made it to London, Ontario about 5 p.m. Uh, local time to team up with Kasasori Shabata and face Lance Archer and the Righteous. Love Shabata teaming up with the Blackpool Combat Club here after making the save for them just two weeks ago. And what we got was a very energetic tag team ma- uh, trios matchup here. Uh, Righteous and Archer to control early on, taking the heat on Brian Danielson before he made the hot tag to first Claudio and then Shabata coming in. We got Claudio going at it with Archer continuing off from when when they uh, went at it 
a couple of weeks back on Collision. Shibata coming in for the hot tag, bringing his hard hitting offense and his high his high impact uh, strikes. And then uh, Archer tried to take uh, take control with a big choke slam, but it was the Blackpool Combat Club and Shibata fighting off. Finally, it was all offense, all taking out the uh, big men on the outside, whether it be Archer and Dutch, leaving Vincent on his own with Shibata. Shibata hit, uh, locking on the sleeper and then hitting the PK for the victory here. Blackpool Combat Club defeating uh, Lance Archer and the Righteous. Uh, I thought this was a really fun close to the show with the baby faces picking up the win. The crowd was very much into this one as well. Well, and I thought that all all the all six men worked really well together to deliver a really good main event to the show here. Sober guy, what did you think about the main event of Collision? Uh, very fun main event. Um, kudos, really, man, to dancing and fucking <clears throat> excuse me, Cast, uh, Claudio to get to get to freaking London and Ontario for this match on a Collision of all places. They should have honestly had the weekend off, but now I digress. But for them to go out there and, and that match wasn't that short match either. I think that looked pretty much a good time, amount of time for that six man. As as usual, their main. Oh, my camera's not even on. Jesus Christ. It's all good. So, um, uh, fun, fun match. Uh, just to see Dan Sand and Shabata team in, that was pretty dope. Based off what their match they had two weeks ago. Um, I could care less about the righteous. Uh, I almost got Vincent and Lance Archer confused a few times. Uh, but fun match. Obviously, we knew who was going to win going out of that match. So, yeah. I enjoyed it, though. I thought it had a, a g- good energy to it. Brian Danielson, man. Brian Danielson and Claudio Castanoli. Bravo, guys. That's Bravo. It. Bravo. Bravo. Go Mexico to Canada. That's insane. Yeah, that is nuts. That is crazy. That is insane, and and he's oh, a, so he, it's not like that guys are going to like a, even a dynamite or anything. Like, God, gonna, gonna but go but Brian Brian might do that shit again this week because he's versus Blue Panther on Friday. Oh, he's yeah. versus Blue. He's versus Blue Pan. His his dream match. He gets to have it. Reno, Mexico. He's versus Blue Panther on Friday, and knowing him, he's gonna try to make it for Collision. God, man, that's crazy. Kudos to Brian, man. He's making. He was not playing. Well, no, no, no. Colli- There's no collision uh, live this week. It's t- yeah, because it, 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 it comes out 11:30 at night. Who the hell is watching? Us <laughs> after almost damn near going up at like 1:30 in the morning. Hey, oh, come man. on! Wrestling fans are gonna be watching a dumb press conference. Might as well watch some wrestling instead. Press conference. Yeah, the press conference for WrestleMania. Oh yeah, that dumb shit. Uh, listen, that's a, that's afternoon on Friday. I don't even. I mean, I'm sure it's gonna be packed because a bunch of marks. Want to go look go look at the wrestlers talk like we haven't seen already two press. No, I'm talking about the post show, the post show press conference that they do. Oh, it's about when the show's over. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm that's basically the, that's basically going to be going head to head with Collision. Oh, uh, because they have a press conference at, on Friday at, at in front of Wells Fargo for Mania. Uh, Why? But whatever. We got another super chat donation from Will Chisholm, a super Chisholm, if you will. Thank you so much. Thank you. Fuck you. Bye. Will says, I love the video package. I'm glad AEW is doing it more. I like the fans. Uh, He says, I don't like the fans who fake care about it. Yes. Yes. Because that's. That's what this all started. This started with a fan who admitted he doesn't watch AEW because of how the other fans talk to him on social media. So it did not matter about video packages. Wow, so you have saying, a fucking brain of your own. Got it. You're dumb. Solid. Cool. Yeah. So it did not matter, but I, I think I do think that it does add to the presentation of stuff, and it does make it more more casual, fr- casual fan friendly. Because a casual fan can watch an episode of Collision and they'll be like, oh, I learned this about Will Ospreay. I'm now interested in his matchup with Brian Danielson. So it, it's helpful. Then we got another Super Chat donation from our boy Will Chisholm. This one, a big one. Thank you so much, you, Will. Will. As always, we appreciate you. He wants you. me to work with pricks constantly. That's that's what it is. Nevertheless, uh it- Will says, uh, Willow versus Mercedes at double or nothing will be great. I just want to be, I just want to be here. You let, I uh, just want to 
here you let a red bone take the title off a dark skinned black woman uh who booked this swerve. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, Swerve Surf would be the one who would book Mercedes over Willow, but they're they're pretty much the same complexion. They're, they're the same skin color, <laughs> but white skin. It, that, that would be more like Mercedes over uh, Queen Aminata. Oh, I That's say Aminata or something. Not yeah. Willow. Willow's light skin. Yeah, Willow is Willow is as light skin as Mercedes is pretty much. Well. But yes, that is a good joke, though. And I, I do agree. I just think that they need to figure out that Mercedes is more comfortable as a heel. And that's probably the direction they should let her go. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, obviously, she's being built up as a big star. I don't expect her to have, I guess, multiple TV matches. But like, what direction are you guys trying to go with? with her is what I'm getting confused on right now. I mean, I, I know the feud wise, but like, you know, I guess they're trying to show her, her strength. I mean, her weaknesses now, like have her talk at, uh, at commentary, coming out, cutting promos, getting her, I guess, more uh, comfortable in that scenario. But we'll see. But the, but the reason why Mercedes became a star was because of her wrestling. Like, like, yeah, yeah exactly. I, and that's what I'm not feeling. I'm not feeling her not having matches. Yeah. And yeah, I, I I realized that they probably were going for Willow and Mercedes at double or nothing, but I really feel she needs a match at Dynasty at the very latest. Her first match should be at Dynasty. Yes. You cannot you cannot wait yes. until double or nothing. Jeremy says this main event she match needs, was she needs to face her. fucking face Statlander, man. Statlander or even Serena D. Serena D wouldn't take that much work to do that match. Somebody like at least give her like a tune up or like have her food, have her face. You could have her either face Statlander or you could have her even go against Sky Blue. Like, so you know your screen's black. Uh, I know. I don't know what the hell's going on my phone. Like, my my AirPods went out, the my AirPods now they back in, and then my screen went freaking Undertaker on me. Like, I, I don't know what's going on. Well, we're almost done. Uh, Will, uh, we got Will, uh, Will Chisholm with another super chat donation. Damn, a, super, Chisholm, man. a super Chisholm, he looking out for you and me. Let's I appreciate, appreciate you. you. Uh, Will says Mercedes and Jade both feels like undercover heels. Yes, very much so. Very much like they want to be heels, but they're they like both companies know they're going to be popular and people are going to cheer them because they look so cool and they have star power. So they don't want to put the foot on the pedal of them being heels. That's fair. It's fair. Uh, I can't see you, but I'll put my thumb in the middle for the. I'm just going to tell you. I was going to say, I'll put my thumb in the middle and I'll put another thumb for you. You just tell me, is it thumbs up or thumbs down? But final call for Super Chat donations. Final call for let us know your match of the night. MVP, LVP, out of 10. What did you give the show for this week's AEW Collision? And of course... Final call for Super Chat donations as well. Thank you so much to Will and anyone else who wants to show their support. And, of course, I'll give final plugs if he's going to pop up back here now. Uh, check out all the great content that we got on the True Hill Heat YouTube channel right now. Like our NJPW Sakura Genesis 2024 preview. Uh, me and Jay News teaming back up the dynamic duo talking about the big show this coming Saturday featuring Tensuya Naito versus Yoda Suji for the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. Also check out the True Hill Heat flagship podcast, True Hill Heat 270 with myself, Miss Chrissy Love, and so on uh, a uh, true draw Josh. I was about to say top guy JJ, but true draw Josh, Miss Chrissy Love, and myself talking about the latest wrestling news, including the rock big segment with Cody Rose, the blood and curse words being back in WWE, signaling the return of the Attitude Era. So go over and check that out and go to our second channel, True Hill Heat Sports and Entertainment. For our review of X-Men 97, episode 3 right now. That's up right now with myself, 
Ness, and Wendy. But for myself, for the March 30th, 2024 edition of AEW Collision, thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs in the middle in three, two, one. It's a thumbs up from me. Out of 10, I gave this show a seven and a half. I thought this was a really fun, vibrant, energetic show. I'm actually going to go eight. I'll go eight out of 10 because I really enjoyed the opener and the main event, especially. I thought the uh, promo segments, whether it be the Timeless Tony Storm one or the Acclaim one, were very effective with building or talking about whatever feud that they have going on at the moment, as well as the one with Copeland, uh, Kingston, and Briscoe building both the Briscoe and Kingston Supercard matchup, as well as the Dynasty Trios matchup being made with House of Black, like the Malachi uh, Copeland tees. A lot of good stuff from this episode, so I go 8 out of 10. I thought this was a really good episode of Collision. My MVP for this show, I'm going to give it to... I got to go with Matt Cardona. Matt Cardona making the big return here. I'm having a great matchup with in his dream match. He got his dream match, got a big return. He felt like a main event heel here. It's got to be Matt Cardona, LVP for the show. Uh, I usually go with the easy ones of someone who lost very quickly. So I can go with J.D. McDonough, but I'm going to go. I mean, no, I was going to say J.D. McDonough. I mean, J.D. Drake, but I'm not going to do that because J.D. Drake is awesome. I'm actually going to go with the LVP being Max Caster. Max Caster is starting to feel like Chris Jericho energy of someone who used to be cool in AEW, but just isn't cool anymore and is a detriment to the product. Unfortunately, that's the energy that is coming from Max Caster at the moment. And the match of the night, I got to go with Copeland versus Cardona. Those two guys tore it up in Cardona's dream match. And the London, Ontario crowd really deserves some MVP shout outs. So they're my honorable mention because they were an amazing crowd. Ontario always delivers Canada. Uh, not Canada because Quebec was not a good crowd on Wednesday. But Ontario, Toronto, uh, now we see London. They deliver for AEW. So go to Toronto. Go to Ontario. Go to uh, Texas. Go to your Boston's. Those are the crowds that deliver for AEW, it seems. And uh, Trey Jones, yes. He says the fall of Max Chester needs to be studied. Sad, sad case. Sober guy JJ couldn't make it back in time, but that is fine. We appreciate him for joining us today, and we appreciate all of you for watching us live. If you're watching on demand, we appreciate that as well. Drop the thumbs up. Comment down below and let us know what you thought about this week's AEW Collision. And I will be back with you live tomorrow, 105 p.m. Eastern time for our WrestleMania 40 preview. Myself, Romeo, Sober Guy JJ, hopefully no technical difficulties. And special guest, Zach Haydorn of SE Scoops will be joining us for a great, great preview of the big cards coming up Saturday and Sunday, WrestleMania 40. But until then, it is me, it is me, your true hill phenom, SP3. This has been Collision Discourse number 28 for the March 30th, 2024 edition of AEW Collision. We are signing off until next time. Later, y'all.